Happy Thanksgiving, Coach Dean. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Beautiful day out there today. Yeah. Scott, Michael. Do you want to kick it off? Yeah, Coach Dean, just um, from your uh, vantage point, you've been on a lot of teams with, uh, where depth was very important. Um, just what's your philosophy on depth and trying to build depth and the, the, the value of having depth in your units? Well, absolutely. Uh, it's very, very important. You, you know, you're never going to go through a season. You can see that around the league and with us, with every team. Uh, guys are going to get hurt. It's hard for all everybody to play all 17 games. And, you know, you, the, if there's a big drop off between the first group and the second group, you know, that can be that can be a tough day. So depth is very, very important. But the other thing that's important, though, too, is that, you know, you'd like to play as many guys as you can possibly play in a game. I really have always believed in that. But to play, you got to know what you're doing. We're not going to play you just to gain experience at the expense of the other 10 guys. You know, you you got to, you, what happens there is if you play a guy just because you want to play him and you want to get him experience, but he's not doing it the way you need to have it done, that hurts him with the other 10 guys. And you don't want to ever let that happen. I've seen that happen before. And, and all of a sudden that guy loses credibility. You want the guy, you try to put them in a spot where they're going to be as successful as possible, but you would like to play as many guys D as, as you, you can. You really would. You, you'd like to spread the wealth around a little bit. And uh, Coach Coach Art uh, said the defense uh, had a great, a good outing last game, kept it to a two-score game late. Uh, you know, the sacks were the obvious things you got home. What are some of the things you all can continue to grow on, uh, with? Well, we did a little bit of our job on our pressures the other day because we actually all three sacks were off of pressures. And so we, we did a better job there. Uh, a couple of them were in zone. One was in man. So it didn't really have anything to do. We did a better job all the way around, not only running the pressure, but in the back end, too. Not, you know, the guy not having a chance to uh, get rid of the ball quick and get it out. So I thought we did a better job there. We still need to keep continuing to do a better job. In the pass rush, I thought we did better on third down. We did a little better in the red zone. Those are two key things. But we still got some things we got. It's like every week. There's always things that you got to clean up. You're never going to play a perfect game. But I thought we improved in the right direction. So I, I thought, you know, I saw some positive things more than in other games. And so hopefully we can build on that. Thanks, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, same to you, d -Led. Mike Rothstein. Happy Thanksgiving, Dean. Hopefully, hey, how many family, Michael. how many family members you got coming? No, none. Uh, we got a friend, a couple friends coming over, and one of the coaches coming over, and that's it. But we're spread out. We got a daughter in LA, a daughter in Boston, two daughters in Ohio, one in Michigan, and so. And my son's got his own thing going with his family. So a pretty quiet day at our house today. I'm guessing you'll probably take that. <laughs> I will take that. Yeah. Probably watch a little football while I sleep. <laughs> what, when you look at it, what A.J. Terrell has done this year, the way he's played, does that allow you to do more things defensively? Um, that's, that's a good question. Um, it does in some respects, but the thing of it is it's really – is really not about one guy in the secondary. Sometimes it can be a little bit more about one guy up front. You can try to get that guy one-on-one -on -one pass rush. You can try to get that guy one-on-one -on -one in some situations. It usually deals more with those guys. Generally in the back end, you can do a little bit more with coverage if you got a guy you know that is a good man coverage guy. Uh, but in the secondary, it's a little different because it really deals with the whole unit more than it does one guy. That certainly helps, but it's really still more, uh, I know I'm kind of kind of going skirting around the question a little bit, but it really in the secondary deals more with the entire unit than it does like a particular guy up front. Like if you got an Aaron Donald up front or you got Grady Jarrett or stuff, you're gonna do some things, move guys around, you're gonna do some things up front to try to get a match up there. You can do it in the back end, 
to some extent, but if all of a sudden, like in Dallas, where they got three or four receivers that are real good, pick your poison. You know, you can put him on one guy, but that doesn't mean the other guy is not going to have a blowout day. You know, so who do you pick? It really deals more with the entire unit back there than it does one guy. Is that part of the reason why he hasn't traveled much with receivers this year, or is that a preference of you right now in your defense? Well, but the other thing is, is that guys that travel, when you hear about guys matching up on certain guys, basically they are man coverage teams. And that's what they're going to do. Because now, all of a sudden, okay, you now play, you're a zone team or you're a multiple coverage team like we are. All right, so if I travel him with a guy, now he ends up in the slot and we're playing zone, he has to play like a nickel. Or if he's an outside guy, he has to play cover two outside. Then he has to be a hook dropper if he's inside. The problem with traveling a guy there, then the problem of it is if you do travel him, the offense knows you're in man coverage because that's the only time that guy ever lines up on that guy. So when you're a, when you're a man coverage team, it doesn't matter. When you're a multiple coverage team and you play a lot of zone, it's a lot harder. And just the last thing kind of on this, I know you said it, the whole secondary has to work as a unit more than maybe up front with one guy. For the safety that is on AJ's side, or maybe even the, the backer, if there's a backer in coverage on that side, does that offer them – I don't want to say comfort, but a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more uh, leeway because you know what AJ can do and that that's probably a lockdown spot or a clo as close to a lockdown spot as you're going to get? Only on certain coverages. You're partially right in the fact that there are certain coverages that you kind of know he's going to be there. Then you can kind of tweak it a little bit that, yeah, you know, you don't have to worry about this, but it's only in certain coverages, not all of them. You know, it's not like – carte blanche, you know, that all of a sudden uh, he's over there on that side, everything's going to be cool. It's only maybe in certain coverages you can say, okay, we're going to be a little sturdier over here so you guys can play it this way. You tweak it a little bit, but you don't really change it. Thanks, Dean. I appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, no problem. The same to you, Michael. Josh Kendall. How much that you hear Arthur talk about physically? Can you hear me? You're breaking up, Josh. Try that again, Josh. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah. How, how much of the way that you hear Arthur talk about physicality reminds you of the way that Bill did or even maybe Vrabel? Uh, the importance really, of physicality. Really all, all of them I've worked for, whether it be Bill, whether it be Vrabel, whether it be uh, John Harbaugh, all those guys, and even coming out of college, the guys that I coached for. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot. I mean, most head coaches, that's the way they want to talk. I mean, you know, I did, I've did. i been with Arthur at Tennessee. I saw how physical he was being the offensive coordinator on that side of the ball, wanting to run the ball with Derrick Henry and being physical and playing that kind of ball. And what that does, I really like it from the standpoint of it really helps you on defense because you know you're going to practice that way. Hey, uh, let me give you an example. Okay, I was with Saban in 1990. We were at the University of Toledo. We went nine and two. We were like number two in the league or maybe first in the league on defense. Nick Grant, we were a run first offense. I mean, we pounded the ball. So we were really physical on defense. The next week, next year, he left after that first year. And we got a new coach who was really a good coach, but he's an offensive coach who really did a lot of empty and a lot of spread formations. And I noticed on defense that all of a sudden we went down to about third in the league and we weren't as physical because every day we practiced against this spread offense and we weren't a physical team. And I had an old coach there in town at Toledo that I always went to for advice. And he told me, I said, what? I don't feel like we're as physical as we were. And he goes, that's because you're not physical on offense and you're not practicing that way. So I went back to the head coach in the off season the next year and said, can we have one period a day? no matter what, that we are just, it's ground and pound. I mean, it's just physical, physical football. And he said, absolutely. And he did that, and we went right back to being number one on defense. So I love having a head coach like that. How, how has the conversation around the physicality of the game changed since you started coaching? I mean, I, I feel like as, as you, you started talking about brain injuries, you, you've had to approach things differently. There's less contact in practice. But how does – how does the conversation in your rooms 
or, or has it changed? Do you still, is that still sort of the baseline of the game for you? For yeah, the, the conversation hadn't changed. It's just a little bit about what are penalties and what aren't penalties. Yeah. It's more about we still want to be physical. We still want to take on blocks. We still want to tackle hard. We want, But it's changed a lot, like, in terms of hitting the quarterback. I mean, yeah. before it was like, you know, hit the guy. And he didn't really worry about much of anything. Now it's like pull the flags off of him, you know, because yeah. that's really what it should be. Because, like, the other day I watched a game the other day where the quarterback slid less than a yard from the guy that was tackling him. And the guy got called for roughing the quarterback because he slid. And, he, and the guy couldn't avoid him. Couldn't avoid him. It's the same thing over the middle. you got to be careful, you know, where's the strike zone? You don't want to get penalized. You don't want to get fined. You want to do everything within the rules of the game. But the rules of the game have changed tremendously on the physical side of it. And so especially with quarterbacks, and I'm not saying it's bad. It, it's all bad, especially on receivers coming over the middle. You know, there's been some – Back in the old days, there were some nasty, nasty things that happened. Right. So I think the rules are put in place for the right reasons. I think sometimes it's just tough on the officials to be able to actually monitor it. So the conversation hadn't changed about being physical. The conversation has changed on how to be physical, especially when it comes to tackling. Thanks, Dean. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, you too, Josh. Scott? You have used so many kind of different bodies um, um, along that front. How, like, like how has that group evolved over the course of the season? Well, what I think I really like is the fact is I do think we have, like going back to D. Led's very first question. I think we got a little depth up there. You know, I feel like there's, you know, there's certain guys that are up on certain weeks and certain guys that aren't. But at least I think we, there's not a big drop off. There, there's not this like, okay, well if this guy's down, boy, we are. We're hurting. I don't think that. I think there's a lot of guys that could be active one week and not active the next week, and it has nothing to do with necessarily them not playing well. It's more to do with maybe the style that we're going to play defense that week. Other than Jarrett, you know, I think all those guys, we could play any one of those guys. I, I do like the fact that I think we have starting to establish a little bit of depth up there. Thank you. You bet. And for me? Uh, you're still muted. There you go. <laughs> I can't read lips, Anthony. I'm good. <laughs> uh, sadly, sadly, oh, man. Uh, my question more so was, obviously, you're facing Trevor Lawrence um, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, what have you seen at, from Trevor Lawrence when watching film, even though he's a rookie and he's, you know, basically just started his career this season? Yeah, he's a rookie, but came from a system in college that was a pretty daggone good system. And it was, you know, he they won a lot of games. He's used to winning. He's got a winning attitude. He's that kind of guy. He's a big guy. He's not an easy guy necessarily to bring down because he's big. He can also run a little bit. He can run the zone read a little bit. The guy can run. I mean, you don't want to underestimate what he can do with the football running. But the other thing is, is this guy, and everybody knew it coming out. That's why he's the number one pick. He's got an arm. I mean, he can throw all the throws. I mean, we faced some guys this year that, you know, you'd, we tried to pack the paint a little bit more and make them throw outside because we didn't think they could really do it. They didn't think they could throw a comeback. I don't know what throw this guy can't make. He can throw a comeback. He can throw a seven route. He can throw a go route. He can throw over the middle on a dagger route. I mean, he's got all the throws. So all he's lacking is experience in the NFL. That's what he did. You know, all of a sudden, the I, I saw a play the other day that he threw – and all of a sudden, the, the zone closed quicker than it did against Clemson, you know, because he's playing against an NFL defense, he back. Other than that, this, this guy's got all the tools to be a great quarterback in this league for a lot, a lot of years. Thank you, Dean. That's all for me. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, same to you. Great. We have time for one more. Anybody? Yeah, Dean, we've asked everybody this, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, mac and cheese uh -oh. thoughts. What's that? Your thoughts on mac and cheese and, and how it fits as a defensive style? Mac and cheese. Well, that's a nuts and bolts, blue collar. That college, <laughs> I lived on mac and cheese. That's, that's nuts and bolts, blue collar. That's what defense is right there. That's mac and cheese. Good old Ohio uh, mac and cheese. That's what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> Were you a Big Mac and Cheese guy? Huh? Are you a Big Mac and Cheese guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, I absolutely. She lived on it in college. That's the only thing we could afford. So, <laughs> now nah, I love it. I love it. Still eat it. Still eat it a lot. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, dude. All right. Thanks, 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 Thanks,